Hey everyone, it's the Infinite Realms. Today I'm going to talk about the book of Boba Fett. And um, so to get right into it, it's the story that's continuing about Boba Fett, who, which is not really a spoiler at this point, but isn't dead after we see him in last time in Star Wars, where he's protecting Jabba the Hutt, uh, who's keeping Princess Leia as prisoner. He falls into a dune where there's a giant worm that eats him and he survives of course because there wouldn't be a show if he didn't and um to get into the non-spoiler section which i want to say right now if, um if you've seen the show you know feel free to watch the whole thing uh if you like and um and if you haven't um feel free to also come back to see the rest of the video uh, which would be nice and uh, and a thumbs up would also always help um, but to get back to what I'm trying to say about the book of Boba Fett he has a conflicting story about his identity he wants to either live a peaceful life or be a bounty hunter and he doesn't have an easy choice of deciding what he wants uh, so he has uh, help from some acquaintances and that leads him to figure out what that is and protect it at all, at all costs with, um, with, with also some characters that were from the Mandalorian so uh, now to get into the spoilers um, to put it simply Boba Fett kills the worm that was keeping him uh, keeping him basically like as food I guess that's digesting and didn't digest properly he shoots his way out he walks the sands of, uh, I think the, uh, I'm not sure if that's still in Tatooine or Kimio, the planet, but whichever one it may be, he is walking on the desert. He passes out. Jawas come to pick up his, his body. Um, well, they don't. They knock him out and steal his armor. And... Uh, he wakes up to a clan of Tusken Raiders who take him as family um, at first glance he seems like a sacrifice but he fights his way out of it and he proves himself to be a capable warrior which is something that the Tusken Raiders need when um, life is so short not having strong fighters to protect their clan and he becomes a part of them uh, doing certain tasks and helping protect their clan from uh, invaders and the other very important plot point of the show is that there's this um, cargo that's passing by in a train that kills all living species that get close to it uh, which is pretty crazy especially given that if they're innocent have nothing to do with the train then you know they probably still get shot and So that happens, and uh, basically, Boba Fett helps uh, the the Tuscan Raiders uh, shoot the the people on the train, the the aliens in the train, the alien species in the train that are shooting at them, and um, and are importing some spice cargo that's like. You know, reminds me of the, the movie Dune and the story about spice and its importance and uh, how it's a very valuable and um, so they'd move that around and uh, uh, there's also some other um, alien-like pig that are not friendly they're hostile to Tuscan Raiders also, and 
Boba Fett pays him a visit in a bar and it gets really bad and uh, I think he ends up shooting all of them and then I don't, I don't remember what Boba Fett was doing for the Tusken Raiders but he left to do some other job and he returned to the clan being entirely massacred and it was sad for him because he felt like he was part of a family that was trying to live a peaceful life and uh, he later on just uh, finds his way to see what else there's left for him because he wants to find his armor uh, and he finds a woman who was a bounty hunter uh, tracking down the Mandalorian in the uh, the Mandalorian series and she agrees to help Boba Fett um, find his armor and become the daimyo of Mos Espa where uh, Jabba the Hutt was like the ruler of the bounty hunters there and um, he needs help because there's another bounty hunter who I'm not gonna name just for the purpose of keeping some things mysterious enough to watch the show and not just tarnish everything that there is to know and um, he needs her help and then he also needs the Mandalorian's help and the show feels like a part two of the Mandalorian if I'm gonna be honest I know it's about Boba Fett but it seems like the Mandalorian just keeps the spotlight uh, the strongest with him uh, given that he has the dark saber he technically rules the mandalorian race was that and even one of his comrades try to fight him for it and his comrade loses and luckily he doesn't die either so it's not so bad but uh, uh he the mandalorian gets uh Dinjarin gets ridiculed for uh taking off his helmet because it's against the clan and that clan rule is uh pretty senseless because the mandalorian race is almost non-existent there's very few members and there's no m mines for him to like you know start mining up vescar or something so um he um i don't know he has a temporary ban or something i don't know if it's a total ban from like ever being a part of the his sacred clan was the woman who made his armor and um uh his last request is like i think to make this vescar spear he had to fight lightsabers with and to chain armor for uh baby grogu who we get to see again which is really nice we see luke skywalker and ahsoka and luke skywalker um looks young and it's mark hamill with like cgi which is interesting and um we see him training baby grogu and then we see uh the mandalorian trying to visit and it causes issues because grogu isn't allowed to have emotional attachments so he either has to decide to take yoda's lightsaber and be um a jedi master or uh you know basically be like the mandalorian in its own way with uh blasters and still use the force and stuff but can't officially be a jedi so uh that's what luke tells grogu by the way he gives him the choice of the lightsaber or the chain armor surprisingly chooses the chain armor um i was conflicted by that choice too um either see the person who always protected you or take a lightsaber and bear no emotional attachment to anything and live a long lonely life i mean i don't know i mean it's not that lonely with other jedis but you know you're still very independent so that's the only thing i have against jedis is like their clan they're not clan but like their council is very strict to the point where even though you have really cool abilities and powers it's almost like at what cost when you have to only have that alone and you can't like get married or do anything like that so uh yeah so boba fett's recruiting people to help him fight the other bounty hunter uh 
who's kind of like a wannabe Clint Eastwood, if I'm going to be honest with you, the way he looks. But um, that's probably already a hint. And he uh, simply, to put it short, he wins the fight. And uh, you get to see uh, Boba Fett use that uh, this giant lizard monster that uh, used to be Jabba the Hutt's pet, so that's really cool. He even used it in battle, and uh, yeah, he won the fight. He keeps his land, he remains the daimyo, he remains friends to the Mandalorian, and who knows if there's gonna be any sequels after, but I highly recommend watching the show. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and share it. Um, there's gonna be more videos soon. I have a tough schedule, so I will keep you updated on new videos. So uh, thank you and see you in the next video.